Um, I put out on the sign this past week, the Bible and the oil, Google it. What is God doing? I believe God is bringing um, all over the world. The, the only two that I know of in particular are uh, what Pastor Johnny referred to, markers that are in uh, northern Georgia. I'm sure there are others elsewhere in the world, um, but there are those two. And it, they came our way, meaning we were exposed to, we, we ran into uh, Pastor Johnny when we went to, our intention was to go to Dawsonville, which we did go, and our intention was to uh, be baptized uh, where God showed them fire on the water. And uh, we were given a, a little container. We've had several from this congregation who have previously been down to Dalton, Georgia, and have been exposed to what God is doing. The Bible and the oil, Google it. What is God doing? I believe uh, uh, that he is bringing a special, uh, extraordinary, it's an extraordinary uh, marker that is pointing to Jesus. Um, and it's not about the oil, uh, but it's an oil that, God, that, that is, God is providing. And I've put these things. My purpose, and it's just going to be to start it, my purpose is to increase our faith in God and his provision of oil from the Bible. That's what my intention is. This will take several weeks uh, because uh, I appreciated the testimonies that we have heard this morning, three of a uh, uh, shoulder. I have an area behind my ear that's about one-tenth now of what it was when uh, I first started putting oil and proclaiming Jesus, proclaiming, because uh, it's pointing to Him. But it's a, it's a supernatural marker that God has given. Now, to those who are walking in Christ, uh, the marker is within you, it is your faith in Christ. To a world that's estranged or doesn't have a clue or is just uh, it needs to be, their attention needs to be captured. Jesus captured the attention of so many people in the gospel with healings that took place in a very secular world that is by and large convinced in the United States that. Uh, all this came into being through evolution, and there isn't a God, and I'm not accountable, and live in, cra in what could be, I would refer to as just, the Bible calls them fools. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. There is a whole culture where that's being nurtured, that's being raised up. And so God is bringing a very clear demonstration, and it's nearby us, well, you know, two hours away. And so I believe God has granted us opening. We have seen so many things happen. But everything is going to be by faith. Everything has to be by faith. For without faith, it's impossible to please Him. So uh, my intention is to enlarge our faith, develop our faith as a tool to reach out to people who maybe not be following God at all, don't have a clue. They're just out in left field. And God is bringing a demonstration that you can call to their attention. That's why I've put that sign out there. Google it. Because uh, there's so many reports on the Bible and the oil. Google it. What is God up to? Try and stimulate thinking of those who go by and they don't have a clue. And they're not pursuing God. They're not thinking about God. They, they don't have a clue. And, the, and God is, is using this. My, when we went down two weeks ago, uh, we heard so many testimonies. They just had testimony after testimony after testimony after testimony of healing, of relationships, of sickness, healing, of all kinds of things. And they would have gone on and on and on. They just had devoted so much time to that, and then they wanted to spend most of their time just ministering to people. So here's the situation. 200 gallons of oil out of a Bible in two plus years. It's been two plus years and it's, I'm sure by now it's more than 200, uh, but it was back earlier in the year, it was 200 gallons of oil. Um, you know, how is it explained? There is a, a number, I think, a significant number of people. Who cares? So what? Who cares? There's a, a large number of people in our culture especially who will say, oh, it's just a trick, they're just trying to make money, they're, they're selling it, and they, you know, they got pipes, or in the middle of the night they sneak in there and they pour all kinds of stuff in there. It's just a trick, it's chicanery, it's not, it, you know, so that's how they, uh, some seek to answer, but I, just, I don't care, don't bother me with that. 
just who cares? So there's this Bible given oil, big deal. Um, there's ground, there's pumps, there's ground given oil. Uh, you know, it's just big deal. And there was some that the way they handle it, the way they don't have to really deal with it, it was, oh, it's all fake. It's just a sleight of man. It's all fake. Or it's, it's demonic. You know, it's, it, it's the occult. It's witchcraft. It's just, it's not. Or there's an answer. It's a trick of man I should have put in there. It's witchcraft. It's God. So another possibility is it's God. God is doing it. Well, um, if it's God... What does it mean? What does it mean if it is biblical? If it's God, what does it mean? Now, is it even biblical? Show me in the Bible where it says you buy a Tupperware container or a, uh, a, a Rubbermaid um, container tote. Buy a Rubbermaid tote, put a Bible in there, a New King James Version Bible, 17 year old New King, New, King, New King James Version Bible, and it'll start producing oil. Uh, you know, just show me in the Bible, show that to me in the Bible, and then I will believe it. There's some, that's how they'll approach it. I won't believe it unless Jesus did it, unless he took a scroll and put it in a Tupperware tote or a clay pot. Because you may say, well, there weren't Tupperware totes back then, but in a clay pot, and it became oil. If it is God, what does it mean? If it is, is it even biblical? Is, they claim it's very biblical. And um, Hebrews 11 says, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen, oil, with the world, things which are seen were not made of things which do appear, a Bible. Things which are seen, when God created the world, there was nothing that appeared. God created it by the spoken word. In this instance, God is bringing something into being, or something is being brought into being by a non-natural source. A Bible in a plastic tote is emitting, has emitted in the past two years, over 200 gallons of oil. Why? What is God doing? I, I, I say Hebrews 11.6 But without faith it's impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is. Must believe that it's not God, it's just luck. It's a little hard to say it's just circumstance. It's just circumstance. It's, it's a little hard to say that. You mean a Bible is emitting 200 gallons of oil? And the oil's been tested, and uh, two uh, chemical research places have come to the same conclusion. It is not of this world. It is unexplainable. It is not made by human hands because the composition of it is not of this world. Well, so what? But to those who see it as this is a resource that God is making available in a time when we're at the very edge of the harvest, the greatest harvest in the history of mankind, that there's all kinds of resources that God is going to be making available, uh, the raising of the dead, miraculous things, catching the attention of people, because you have so many that are so secularized and so locked into a position, it's for some of them, it's... It doesn't convince everybody, but for some of them, they're so convinced of the world as they see it that something that just shakes can shake their world and can cause them to begin to think it's it's a tool, it's a resource that God is giving. It's not for sale. You can't buy it. They don't advertise it. God told them more than two years ago, don't sell it, don't advertise it, don't promote it. I will make openings for you. Now, without faith, it's impossible to please Him. So as you, if you choose to take a prayer cloth, make it avail whether you make it available to, uh, to an, an, a beloved animal that is, um, we, heard, we heard testimony, I think it was where I heard the testimony down in Georgia, of another person, their animal, they, they saw a cat. I think it was the story of a cat, um, a, a, a really sick cat. Um, so was it shared here or was it down in Georgia? Down in Georgia, a really sick cat. So if your dog wasn't really sick, it was on the way of being really sick. 
and you've delivered it from Jesus has through this marker, this demonstration that he is bringing in. But is it, is it biblical? Is this even biblical? I think that's a very appropriate question. The short answer is, from my perspective, it's God. Some of you, the short answer works the best. Don't want a long explanation. It's God. If you believe it is God, then you have the opportunity to exercise faith and to be a witness utilizing something that God has given for the purpose uh, because of Christ who dwells in you, your, your hope is in Christ. This is a picture pointing to Christ, of which, but you're a messenger. There's got to be messengers, just like there's messengers of the gospel. It's God. It is a God kind of unusual, creative, multiplying miracle. The brief answer, it's God. This is a profoundly unusual, and I've said it this way, it is a God kind of unusual, creative, multiplying miracle. The oil is being multiplied. It continues daily to be multiplied. Seven, eight, nine gallons a week is what they've said, is the rate in which it's coming forth now. Are those characteristics of God? Creative? Multiplying? Is, is, is that a characteristic of God? Cre creative, but it's unusual in that it's ongoing. It's ongoing. It's ongoing. So I've put it this way. Uh, three of God's qualities. God creates, God blesses, God multiplies. He does so many other things. But in focusing on this, for my intention is to create an opportunity for your faith to increase in what God is doing. God creates, God blesses, God multiplies. I, I want to use um, in, in the creation. Uh, you see the hand of God, God the creator, God the multiplier, God the blesser. It is this, Genesis 1.22. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters. He was creating the fish and the birds. So this is what he said. This is how God thinks. This is what God's intention is. He said, uh, Be blessed. And he blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the sea and let the birds multiply on the earth. Some of them that he created, he said it regarding Adam and humans. Uh, he blessed them and said multiply. God is a multiplier. He thinks multiplication. And uh, a classic instance is going to be uh, in the Abrahamic covenant. God thinks blessing. He thinks multiplication. This is a multiplication of oil. It is not just something that's occurred once. It's been going on for two years. But is that a God kind of thing that he would do? Is, is it a brand new avenue that he is opening? No, it's not a brand new avenue. Because their testimony is it is flowing out of Psalm, out of the 39th Psalm, and they've been told it pictures the, uh, the stripes. By his stripes you were healed. It is not a brand new avenue. It's not a new way. It's another way that God is speaking the message of Jesus, the Redeemer, the Savior, the one who paid for it with his blood, with his stripes. In the Abrahamic covenant, uh, Hebrews, looking in Hebrews to see of the Abraham and covenant, Abraham, Hebrews 6.13. For when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by, uh, by no one greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely, blessing, I will bless you, and multiplying, I will multiply you. He said, I'm going to bless you, I'm going to multiply you. So is, is a situation where that it is proving to be a blessing, that it is multiplying. Are those God-like characteristics behind it, ultimately behind it? Or is it the slight of man? Or is it just trickery? Or it's nothing. It, has no, it means nothing whatsoever. The very nature of God is He is one who blesses and He is one who multiplies. In the very covenant, and we fall under the Abrahamic covenant in Christ. It's what he, he is the father of faith for all. And um, so Hebrews 6.34, when God made a promise to Abraham because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself saying, surely blessing, I will bless you and multiplying, I will multiply you. In the deliverance from Egypt, well, um, the, the, the multiplying dimension, uh, these were dimensions of which he was freeing Israel from bondage and oppression. And these are the things, the plagues that he brought, and they were multiplied. 
So the, the first one was not a plague, and that's when Moses threw his stiff, st staff down and became a snake. Um, the uh, wizards of Egypt were also, they threw their staffs down, and they became snakes. Uh, so their magic, their black magic, their uh, secret magic, uh, and Moses' snake took care of, just as Jesus destroyed the works of the devil, Moses' uh, snake destroyed the snakes of the enemy. Then became the first of the plagues. The first was when the water of the Nile was made blood. The wizards and the, uh, 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 of Egypt, they also through their chicanery, through their trickery, through their black magic, they were also able to turn water into blood. And uh, they lost the ability to drink uh, all, all over the Nile River. The second, uh, that was the first plague. The second plague was frogs. God multiplied the frogs. The wizards, also the scripture says, multiply. They were able to do that. The land was full of frogs. Then the, and, but Pharaoh's heart did not uh, yield. Then lice it was the dust. He was to touch the dust. And lice came, or could be gnats, or lice, uh, and covered the land. It, multiplying. That intention was to, each one of those represented an Egyptian god. And what God was doing is he was bringing a demonstration that he is greater. He is greater than their gods. And he humiliated them through representations of each of their gods. It was a declaration. Who is God? Are your gods God? This oil is a declaration coming from a Bible for a two-year time period flowing from Psalm 39, which speaks of the stripes, is points to, not the psalm, but just the, the, the number 39. It's uh, livestock, the pestilence came to the livestock. The boils, they had boils everywhere. There was some of the charcoal was taken, became dust and went up into the air, and boils appeared on everybody, even under their feet. And hail uh, was so destructive, and locusts, they came and devoured everything during the plagues, multiplied darkness and death of the firstborn during the plagues. Um, and um, Moses striking the rocks. So this is the one that I wanted to mention in particular this day. In Moses striking the rock for water the first time, the stories in Exodus 17, I believe this is a picture, a parallel, a biblical evidence that God, who blesses and he will bring a demonstration. He brought a demonstration that he is God and he rules and reigns above all. Every Egyptian God he reigns over. And uh, his people, they were led out. They, uh, they went through the miraculous uh, deliverance out of Egypt and the Egyptian army was uh, demolished. And in Exodus 17, they had run out of water. And so this is the situation. Then all the congregation of the children of Israel set out on their journey from the wilderness of sin according to the commandment of the Lord. And they camped in Rapidim, uh, for there there was no water for the people to drink. Wasn't good. There were maybe up to a million and plus people, all their animals and everything, no water to drink. That's a crisis. That's a crisis of big proportions. And Exodus 17, do therefore the people contended with Moses and they said, give us water that we may drink. So Moses said to them, why do you contend with me? Why do you tempt the Lord? Why are you doing this? He is leading you. Why, why are you approaching this that uh, you're, you're, you haven't been thought of, you're not going to be taken care of? And, uh, and the people thirsted there for water. And the people complained against Moses and said, Why is it you have brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with water? There is no provision for us. In essence, that's what they were saying. And God, uh, they had many lessons that they could have learned in coming out of Egypt. So Moses cried out to the Lord saying, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. So God this is the God who blesses and multiplies. And God said to them, go on before the people. There are not many miracles in the Bible that are a real uh, uh, similar situation. There's many miracles. I mean, you can say, well, Elijah did one where he said to the woman, if you'll, give me, uh, if you'll make a, a cake for me, your meal won't end and your oil won't end. And someone can say, that's one of them. No, not really. There was meal that existed and there was oil. There was a multiplication miracle. It was a miracle. There was a multiplication miracle. It certainly was creative, but...
But it's not the extraordinary thing because there was already meal, there was already... Well, the second one where the, the, the woman, where Elisha and the woman and all the oil, and she, he, she, he said, go get all the pots you can and take what oil you have and start pouring what you got into all these empty pots. And some of us see, that's an, it is an example of multiplication. God is a multiplier. God has multiplied oil. Those are two instances where he's multiplied oil. But someone could say, but it's not exactly the same kind of thing. No, you don't have to look for a Tupperware container. But it's not the same kind of thing because it started with oil. And you could go to the miracles of Jesus. Uh, the feeding of the 5,000 plus. Wasn't that a miracle? Of course it was a miracle. Wasn't it a miracle of multiplication? Of course it was a miracle of multiplication. Wasn't it astounding? Of course it was. But it wasn't of the magnitude because he started with five loaves and a couple of fishes. Does that devalue it? It doesn't devalue it. It's just a different category. This is a Bible giving oil. It's completely different. What about the fish where uh, twice Jesus had the multiplication of the fish? They were fishing on the wrong side of the boat. I wish I knew how many feet a boat was. The provision of God is just so many feet away. It's just real close. It's the right side. That's how close it is. It's the right side of the boat. They were on, the I'll say, the wrong side of the boat. But how far away was the right side of the boat from the wrong side of the boat? And... Uh, Jesus said to them when he was first enlisting them, a miracle, he was helping to catch the attention of these fishermen and those that he had called. He was catching their attention. So the miraculous, to awaken them, to break them out of the secular, secular mindset, it's something God will do. This is a miraculous thing in that it emanates from what Jesus has done and is pointing to him. And um, so the fish, no, how do you think those fish came into being? Boy, there's lots of possibilities, and they're all conjecture. Um, God could, you know, God does many things ahead of time, and things are being prepared ahead of time. He could have been gathering those fish uh, for days, for weeks. He could have been gathering them for a few hours. He could have had them all swim to where that boat was. That could have happened. He could have had the water turn suddenly into fish as the net came up, and instantly they became fish. It could have been that. That would have been one of those kinds of miracles where it came from a, a non-similar thing, water to fish. I'm not saying that's what happened, but that would count if that was one of them. All we know is they fished on the left side of the boat and they didn't get anything. And when Jesus said, put your net on the other side, they had an abundance. God is a multiplier. God is a multiplier. There's so many things you could point to in Scripture that God is a multiplier. The very first miracle Jesus did is He changed water into wine. There was no multiplication there, but there was a creative miracle. Was it a miracle? Absolutely, the water into wine was a miracle. But it wasn't. This instance is it's an astounding one. And I believe it's what's taking place in this Tupperware container with this Bible is after this type of miracle. Has God done this kind of miracle in the Bible? The answer is yes. And the Lord said to Moses, Go on before the people and take with you some of the elders of Israel and take in your hand your rod with which you struck the river and go and behold, verse 6, I will stand before you there on the rock. Boy, that's interesting. Wouldn't it be something if the Lord or an angel of the Lord is actually standing over that Bible? He's standing there. Is that possible? Of course that's possible. If you use this story as a biblical validation for that kind of thing happening, this kind of thing could be happening. I will stand before you there on the rock. So I don't think they saw the Lord standing there on the rock, but he was there on the rock. The Lord was standing on the rock. What was, was, it the, the, was it the miracle of him taking his... No! It was the Lord on the rock. Is it at the New King James Version of the Thompson Chain, 17-year-old Bible with uh, things on the margin? You know, is that, is that the deal? Is that what the... No! 
It's the Lord who is doing it. It is God, the multiplier, doing this. And he's exalting Jesus because just, it's like, I don't want you to miss this. I don't want you to mistake. I don't want you to become oil-focused. That the oil, that what people need is a declaration, God is at work. God is at work. He's wanting you to know that he is work. So he's using something he's done in the Bible. It's not exactly the same, but it's real similar. But it glorifies Jesus because of where it's coming from in this Bible. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock in Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and water will come out of it that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. So he strikes it. So this is a rock that it opens to some degree, it's split, and water comes out. That is exactly the kind of thing. Rock and water are not the same. They're two completely different dimensions. One's the liquid dimension, one is the solid dimension. In the Bible, the Bible's in the solid dimension. The oil is in the liquid dimension. It's two completely different. It's different from Elisha. Whereas Elisha had some oil, and it, it just won't run out. It's a miracle. Of course it's a miracle. Of course that, that's a miracle. But this one had an added dimension, which is the kind of dimension that's present in this Bible that for two and, two and a half years nearly at this point in time has been emitting oil. I believe it's, uh, it's an, an aid. It's, it's a helper. It's a miracle. It's a miracle, just like a healing miracle. There are people who are healed, and it opens the eyes of some, and they become more God-conscious. They open their heart to Jesus. So God is providing something that focuses on Jesus. The oil is not the thing, but it's a tool. It's a vehicle that points to Jesus, and it's God-centered, and it points to God in a world that's living their life their own way, doing their own thing. Moses did in the sight of the people. So he called the name of the place there uh, Massa and uh, Meribeth because of the contention of the children of Israel and because they tempted the Lord God, saying, Is the Lord among us? Is the ruin? You know, you, you say, you don't, you're, you're not real sure there is a God. I'll tell you what. Let me tell you the story about the oil. You can Google it. Just go Google it. Let me tell you the story about the Bible and oil. And as a matter of fact, I've got a... I've got a prayer cloth that's had some of that oil put on. Let me tell you about it. God's bringing a witness, a, de- a real, live, miraculous witness of Jesus Christ and what he has done, and that he's done something about sickness and disease. He has made a provision. You could use 1 John 3.8. He's, he's uh, loosened the work of the devil. He's destroyed the work of the devil. And there is a miracle that is ongoing that's down in Georgia, and this oil has come from that Bible. There's a miracle that God is doing. The, the issue is not the oil. That's, this is amazing. There's oil coming from the Bible. It is God is using this to point to Jesus Christ. That's what he is doing. He's exalting. And he's using it all around our country. And um, I'm sure it's going to other places in the world. So uh, these two places, what do they mean? Uh, Massa means trial. They were trial. They were tempting God. Uh, Meribeth is quarrel or strife it, 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 with God. So you may be quarreling with God. You may be in strife with God. You may be in animosity. You know, he's bringing a demonstration to the earth. It's actually in Dalton, Georgia. He's bringing a demonstration that pictures Jesus. And uh, you, you might want to hear about it. You can search it out. You can Google it. You can go to Google and just search Bible and oil. It's real easy to find. But I believe God is looking for people of faith in Jesus Christ who will take a tool, a resource, God's a multiplier. The oil is multiplying. We heard testimony down there of places. We had it happen one time here that I know of. In uh, Joselle, the first Sunday we handed out that her bottle miraculously refilled. We heard of multiple testimonies of people that their oil is multiplying, multiplying in their bottles. God is a multiplier. Let your faith be developed in God as a multiplier. So that you can speak in faith out of your heart. I want to tell you about something that's exalting Jesus, that God is doing. It's not trickery, it's not chicanery. And Jesus is the answer to your need. There's nothing impossible. God has made the statement in the scriptures that with him nothing is impossible. Oil out of a Bible 
200 gallons out of a Bible? That's impossible. But it's a manifestation of God in Christ. It's a manifestation that with God, nothing's impossible. So what you're dealing with is not impossible. Would you mind, would you take one of these cloths anointed with that oil in the name of the Lord Jesus? Would you place it on you? Would you say to God, God, in Jesus' name, would you heal me? Would you do that? That's what you can do. If you don't believe God's a multiplier, if you don't believe God's a blesser, if you don't believe, you know, it's got to be in the Bible, that absolutely has to be in the Bible, then you're stuck. But tell me, is your... Uh, is your name in particular? Do you see your name in particular in the Bible? Well, he said, whosoever will. But is your name there? But, well, I accepted that he says, whosoever will. So if you accept that kind of opening, do you, you, you accept that God is the kind of God who can bring water, enough water to feed probably a million to plus uh, people and all their animals? He can bring it out of a rock. Sure he is. He can bring oil out of a Bible. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Um, so, it's interesting, Psalm 78 is a compendium of the works of God in the nation of Israel. It's a magnificent psalm. It's worth listening to again and again and again and again. And so, it, it addresses all the miracles, and it says this, He split the rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink in abundance uh, like, like the depths. Uh, and he also brought oh, streams out of the rock, and he caused waters to run down like rivers. So it's focusing on, uh, on the rock, that what God did, and the water. So it's the Bible and the oil. In, in, in a, a, a solid, rigid paper Bible, a liquid oil. It's water out of a rock. Why did God do so? Earlier in Psalm 78, that they may set their hope in God. That's what you're, you're, you're a messenger. Well, do you have to use it? Of course you don't have to use it. Take the Roman road. But if you're dealing with someone, there is no God. Okay, can you explain this to me? This is what's happening. This is how it's been evaluated. This is what's going on. Can you explain that? No. Well, I'm telling you the answer is God. You ought to consider that. That they may set their hope in God. Psalm 78. All of the things that God did, they were to pass unto their children, to tell their children, to tell their children. It's a magnificent psalm to read. That they, they, that they would set their hope in God. This is an opportunity that God is doing for people that you come to your attention, that you catch, that them, to, for them to set their hope in God. Number two, and not forget the works of God. Not forget what God has done. You're ultimately proclaiming Jesus not to forget, to keep that, that their hope is in God of the works that God has done and to keep his commandments and they follow and honor him. That's the intention. That's what God's doing. So Pastor Johnny on Sid Roth, he said this. He was asked, what is God's purpose with this oil? And this is what Pastor Johnny said. He felt like God passed on to them sometime after the oil started coming. He said, man can only represent me. But he said, I manifest who I am in what I do. Who he is is a blesser, and he's a multiplier. And he's the, he's the father of his beloved son. So he pictured his beloved son and where in the Bible the oil is coming out of. But he pictured his, his multiplying aspect present in so many places. He said, um, man can only represent me. He said, but I manifest who I am by what I do. And he said, uh, so this is Pastor Johnny saying, and God said, this Bible and this oil is a physical manifestation of everything that you think is impossible. Because, yes, in the natural, it is impossible. Oil, 200 gallons of oil from a Bible in a two-year time period, at the rate now, they said now, we were told, it's eight, eight to nine-ish gallons a week of oil. He said, this Bible and this oil is a physical manifestation of everything that you think is impossible. And he said, it is a manifestation of everything that you say is unbelievable. It's not believable. It is believable. 
whether a person will respond and believe, whether that will shake them out of this uh, secular uh, uh, mindset, is um, God is bringing a demonstration that He can use, that can shake them out of that. There is a God. He's at work. He is glorifying His Son. He is the answer. What Jesus has done is the answer for you. And he said, it is a manifestation of every prayer for every person that you've given up on. You've given up. God is God. There's nothing that's impossible with him. And Pastor Johnny, want, and he said, all I want is if you believe. That's me doing this. So you believe it. So what I've tried to deal with today in this first in this series is, is this even... Does God do this kind of thing? Is he a multiplication type God? Will he bring a demonstration out of something inanimate, a rock? Will he bring something uh, living, so to speak, liquid water? Well, yeah, he did it. Are there other instances, examples? There are many in the Bible where he multiplies it's a different form. Or he caused great multiplication. Or changes the very nature of something from water into wine. There are so many kinds and categories. Uh, people who are real, real, real intuitive, they could say, who cares? It's a miracle or it's not a miracle. If you're a little more analytical, let's say like myself, you care. It's like, well, I want to know what happened. How did God do that? Boy, that's really cool. What went on? What's the biology of that? What's going on in the molecular realm? What's happening? Again, the more intuitive you are, the more you don't care. You just, you don't care. It's, it's God. It's a miracle. That's enough. That's sufficient. Uh, how did God do that? He's got this angel named Fred. And he said, all I want is if you believe that's me doing this, he said, nothing is impossible Nothing is unbelievable. And I haven't given up on a single person, a single prayer that you ever prayed. It's what Pastor Johnny, so my advice to you is to pursue. To pursue. So we have on the table over there, every single prayer cloth on the table has been anointed. It's been anointed with oil. It's been prayed over. It's been touched. Every single one of them has been touched. And uh, I want to give opportunity for someone, anybody have uh, handed out one, and there has come back a report, either for you or for whoever you made the prayer cloth available. Um, oh, I've, boy. I've handed out multiple prayer cloths. I have no reports back yet, but I'm expecting some. However, uh, my wife and I were out running errands, running around, and I have problems with the shoulder. But recently it hadn't been so bad. And just as we were riding, no particular reason, the pain started just shooting through this shoulder. Extremely sharp pain. And my wife looked, she said, you okay? I said, my shoulder's hurting really bad. And I looked down, we were in her car, and she had one of the vials of the oil. So I got some, I reached up in my shirt and rubbed it on my shoulder. I prayed in tongues for about 45 seconds, and the pain left. And thus far it has not returned. Praise God. So praise the Lord. Yes, absolutely. Okay, ask if there's any other testimony. I have two. I gave out two prayer cloths um, to people I know who were, it's a family, they were suffering with ringworm. And I gave it to them, not knowing if they would believe or not. And I said, you know, told them about it, explained it. And that was it. They no longer have ringworm. Wow. It's very hard to get rid of, and it's very, the medicine is very uh, strong that you have to take, so they don't like to give you more than one dose. Okay, so the second is our dog Yeti. He had, I was brushing him out, they have a lot of hair, and I was brushing him out and I felt a lump about that big. I mean, it was, it was good, a good size. 
And I kind of thought, oh, goodness, I know what, you know, our, these breed of dogs are very prone to cancer. And I just thought, you know what? If it worked for ringworm, I'm going to place this on my dog and I'm going to pray for him. And Steve and I both did. And I can tell you right now that that thing, you can barely even feel that it's there. I mean, it has shrunk. I had to really rub and dig and try to, try to even find it. So I don't, I don't know how people feel about animals, but he does love them. And I can tell you, I will be up here and I will be telling you that that dog has no lump at all. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Terrific, Angie.